collapses. Shipes the rebound. Got to push this to the basket. Take it to the basket, guys. It's nine seconds. No timeouts left. What are they doing? R.J. Hunter for three. Good! Rod Hunter has fallen off his stool for good reason. Georgia State up by one. And Georgia State went on to beat Baylor by one. Just part of March Madness. I was already bragging on my Wolf Pack with that last second shot beating LSU. Also, some other big upsets. Number 14 seed UAB, in addition to 14 seed Georgia State, busting all those brackets that people have filled out around the country. So what's the big deal? Well, it's the money being wagered on these brackets and individual games. For example, according to the American Gaming Association, $9 billion will be wagered on the NCAA tournament, quote, with more people filling out brackets than casting a ballot for President Obama. Mercy. For more on this story, let's bring in the NFL Hall of Famer who's going to watch his Georgia Bulldogs this afternoon, I bet. That would be Fran Tarkenton. And you always can catch up with Fran on his website, frantarkenton.com. Hey, Fran, it's good to have you. Sports gaming. Thank you, sir. It's, you know, we see gaming in Vegas and Atlantic City and other places. Should it be made legal nationwide? Well, I don't know about all that, but I think it's harmless for people... Everybody gets involved with March Madness and with this tournament, and you got office pools going on. We have them going on here. Uh, I, I, I think it's a fun thing to do. Uh, I, you know, uh, we're not fixing basketball games. It's uh, uh, pretty much clean fun, and uh, so I don't think you can stop it. And I think it uh, gets more people to want to watch it and be a part of it, and 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 try to beat the system and pick the winners at the end. And that's that. That's what drives the the entire March Madness, and we get the upsets of Georgia State, and and uh, and then uh, Baylor. Uh, Baylor uh, got upset, and 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 you've you've got uh, Iowa State lost, and you got uh, just it's just you, you never know. It's Kentucky's supposed to win the whole thing, and they're undefeated, the greatest team ever. But uh, none of us would be surprised if Kentucky gets knocked off. Yeah, and uh, my Wolf Pack, I've got his work cut out for it against Villanova, the top seed, tomorrow. Yes, you do. And, of course, your Harry Dogs uh, hook up this afternoon in a well, game. Well, we're playing, Mich we're playing Michigan State, and we have a really good team. One of our top players has been injured for the last two weeks, but it's good team basketball. And, you know, what's great about basketball, we see it even with the Atlanta Hawks and, and who don't have star players, so, I have the second best record in the NBA. It's a team game. It's, it's a, when teams get together and play unselfishly and, and play good defense and share the ball, good things happen. And so uh, a, a lesser talented team can win uh, at any level, and especially in college. Well, teamwork is so important to, uh, to the game of basketball, the game of football. And, of course, a team is composed of players who know their role. Yep. Uh, we're going to move now to the NFL because of the story this week about Niners rookie Chris Borland retiring just after one year. He listed his reasons for leaving in an interview on Outside the Lines on ESPN. Friend, let's listen to it, then we'll get your reaction. Okay. Um, you know, brain disease, frankly. Um, and not to say that um, players who've played for a long time, who've played, been physical players, um, that it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, but to me... Um, it just the chance of that happening uh, was more of a negative than the positive that my potential career could be. Traumatic brain injury. There's a guy after one year. Well, yeah, and, 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 and that's the outcome. What's, what's causing all this, it, nobody wants to talk about it. In the press, nobody wants to talk about it. In football, performance-enhancing drugs are so much stronger today than they were 30 years ago, and we've had steroids in pro football all the way back to the 60s and now you cannot I'm, I'm talking to trainers personal trainers and 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 players and ex-players and they're coming out and you cannot get these big biceps pecs thighs all this muscle power you have and you go to the combine and look at these kids all of them are ripped you cannot get ripped from all the personal trainers and doctors I've talked to, you cannot get ripped without taking performance-enhancing drugs, and, and they're really not detectable, and it's epidemic. And what this guy is really saying, at 24, retiring after one year, 
comes in, replaces Pat Willis, leads the team in tackles, and walking away because if he knows if he's going to continue for another 10 years, he's got to shoot himself up with PEDs that's going to do all kind of bad things to him. Let me give you a stat. In 1970, there was one player that weighed 300 pounds in the National Football League. In 2010, there were 522 players that weighed 300 pounds. And, and what's happening, in order to play, you've got to, you've got to juice. If you're going to win championships, you've got to juice. And you, no, no owner has been asked, is, are steroids a problem? They don't, they don't even ask them the question. No head coach has been asked. And now players are coming in. Since I've been an advocate for this for years, players are coming to me and telling the story to me. And the story to me from the players and the personal trainers Drugs are epidemic. Now, what does that have to do with concussions? It makes the players bigger, stronger, faster. The collisions are harder. Putting this stuff in your body. Now, this kid in high school weighed 213. And he's 5'11". As a pro, he's 5'11", 248 of muscle. And I would suggest that if, he, if you talk to him, he might have some things to tell you about PEDs. Well, you are opening up a discussion, and this has always been the way you've done it, Fran. You've been frank on these things, and uh, this whole notion of uh, performance-enhancing drugs is something that uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on, uh, as is always the case. We appreciate you ha having well, you I so much. Well, I challenge you guys. Get, get an NFL coach. 30, uh, there are 32 of them. Get one of them on here. All right, ask fair him. enough. Ask him, are there PEDs in your locker room? And, and I'd like to put a lie detector test on him. All right, fair enough. We will do that. We won't shrink from that challenge. Fran Tarkenden, as always, we appreciate your candor and your comments. We look for you again real soon, and we'll see what happens with your Georgia Bulldogs this afternoon in the NCAA tournament part of March Madness. Go now, dogs. thank you, sir. Now it's time for a Newsmax weather update. Here's Jessica Reyes. Hello, I'm Jessica Reyes with your weather from coast, coast to coast and for your Friday's first official day of spring. We're doing it with some rain by the Pacific coastline. Not so much for our friends across the southwestern portion of the country. Fairly pleasant into parts of San Francisco and into Los Angeles due to a high pressure that continues to push through. Then we are dealing with some showers and thunderstorms by the Gulf of Mexico for your Friday to kick off the weekend. A lot of that will extend into parts of Alabama and into northern portions of Florida. But for the most part, the Sunshine State living up to its name with warm conditions, great beach weather. Then for the northeastern part of the country, we are dealing with a low pressure that's bringing with it uh, rain, a combination of mix, a uh, mix of snow and rain through there to officially kick off spring. And here's some of your weather for next week and also some of your daytime highs. <laughs> And we thank Jessica for that report. Something to look forward to. Spring is on the way. Uh, oh, yes, in terms of March Madness, Miranda Khan wanted me to make sure you knew that her Kansas Jayhawks tip off after noon <laughs> Eastern, I think about 12.15, as they get started in the NCAA tournament. Coming up, popular culture and politics and entertainment and law. James Herson will join us to talk about, well, What's going on on the internet? Mean tweets. We'll talk about some more things too as America's Forum continues here on Newsmax TV.